us. Now, joining us on the guest line from uh, Thunderbirds Pharmacy in Hernando, Mississippi, Cheryl Suth. Cheryl, how are you and how are things in Hernando today? Hey, I'm doing great. It's a little cloudy, but things are looking good. I'm expecting a busy day in the pharmacy. Well, I think there's no such thing as a non-busy day in the pharmacy right now, is there? That's correct. Our phones are ringing off the wall. Thank goodness we are in a position to help fight this um, COVID um, outbreak with um, providing vaccinations and different things to um, help patients fight this battle. Uh, exactly. It's an ongoing thing. And Robert, I, I'm going to go to you first on this. The vaccine. The battle lines are drawn, it seems, regarding mm -hmm. the vaccine. What are you hearing from uh, from your member pharmacies and the people that you talk to every day uh, about what they're facing in the in the community and how things are going in the push to get the vaccine out? Well, uh, let me say this. Um, back when the when the pandemic first hit um, 18 months ago or so, the pharmacists never left their position. They never left the, the front lines. They, they are some of the best healthcare heroes out there. Uh, when others were going home, the pharmacists stayed and busy. They adapted, they overcame, uh, they helped their patients, served their patients, and they are still doing that today. Just what Ms. Uh, Cheryl Sutter just said a while ago, she's gonna have a busy day in the pharmacy. That's what my, our members are seeing across the state right now. Uh, the vaccination numbers have gone up uh, in our pharmacies. Uh, some of our members are giving more vaccinations uh, today than they were um, six months ago or a, a, in, during the middle of the summer. They're also helping with the rapid test and, and other things of that nature as well too. And so it, it's, it's our hope that you know, a lot of people might be on the fence in this day and age right now today about the vac vaccine. Well, pharmacists are the most accessible health care provider in our state right now. And, and, you know, unfortunately, we live in a rural state. And sometimes um, some of our citizens use the pharmacists, their local pharmacists, no matter if it's an independent or, or chain pharmacist, as sometimes their primary health care uh, contact. Well, with that being said, um, if you're sitting on the fence right now about the vaccine, go talk to your pharmacist and go talk with them. Um, I have not found a health care provider yet, physician or pharmacist, that has told me not to take the vaccine. I'm vaccinated. As soon as I can um, get the booster, I will be getting the booster. A lot of our members are doing the vaccination right now they will be doing the boosters uh here shortly uh, and everything else like that um miss cheryl suddeth uh, up in hernando and her pharmacy has a great program going on just like a lot of our uh, members across the state and how is that going for you cheryl how what, what kind of response are you seeing from the folks in the hernando area we're seeing a, a big uptake and people want to get the vaccine anywhere from you know, our population 65 and older to um, the 12 years and up that we're able to vaccinate. Like I said, each morning we start, we, we're doing this by appointment in our setting. The phone's ringing off the wall, people anxious to get in there to get the vaccine. And so we're happy that we're in a position to provide that. And my staff is doing a great job engaging and helping educate people as they come in or people that phone in with questions. Well, and let me ask you this. Uh, you're busy with it right now. Has that been the case since the vaccine became available, or are you seeing an uptick in interest? We are definitely seeing an uptick in interest. Um, of course, the, with us now, we've been in a position to vaccinate since the vaccine became available, and we were able to get our supply. Unfortunately, in our area, the health department had a big um, vaccine um, program going, so people were going there. And now that that has shut down as much, even though they are still doing vaccines there, um, I think just with our accessibility being, you know, um, uh, recognized in the city as a healthcare provider, that we are seeing people reach out to us and coming in to get their shots. Well, and I, back I, in the when it first started, I mean, we had a long list of people ready to come in and get their vaccine, and that's just continued. Yeah, and I promise, Robert, I'm not ignoring you. I'm going to get back to you, but Cheryl's out there on the ground right now. She's on the front line. She knows. Exactly. Uh, and some, I wanted to go back to something that Robert said, that your local pharmacist, especially if you've been doing business with them for a long time, 
it, it kind of counts as a health care provider. And I just want to dig into that for just a second on what that means. And to me, what that means is you have people that come up to you and go, hey, I've got such and such that's bothering me. What do I do? What do I need for this? Does that happen? Oh, yes, sir. That happens on a daily basis, more than one time a day. And so we consider ourselves not only health care providers, but problem solvers. People just <laughs> come to us with many issues. And so we do our best to, within our scope of practice, to take care of what we have, what we can do for the patient. And if we can't, then we reach out and find, you know, a referral source or reach out to their um, help other health care providers to help provide, you know, the need for the patient. We have been catching a lot of heat in the press. Well, number one, because we're Mississippi and we woke up this morning. That happens every day, it seems like. But we have been catching a lot of attention, I guess I should say, the, that we have such a low vaccination rate, a low percentage. It is going up. It is increasing. But, Robert, my question for you is, what's a realistic goal we can shoot for? It's not 100 percent. We all know that. We're never going, we've never reached 100 percent on any vaccine. What, what's a realistic goal for us to shoot for here in the state? Well, I think uh, we need to try to go for 100 percent, no matter if we can get it or not. Um, it is proven that if the numbers are out there, the numbers don't lie, that um, if you're vaccinated, fully vaccinated, that you stand more than a 90 percent chance of staying out of the hospital and that's the most important thing right now is not to end up in the hospital and a lot of people out there the naysayers are saying well you know even though you get you get the vaccination you you you'll still you still maybe get uh, COVID." well you know what the flu shot has been out there forever and sometimes you get the flu shot uh in the fall and you might end up still getting the flu so the, the the thing is, the most important thing is to keep the people out of the hospital because, as we can tell right now, our hospital systems are overrun. We have right here in Jackson, um, we have two makeshift hospitals and a parking garage. I never thought I'd see that in my lifetime. I'm 49 years old. That's something that you think you might see off of a movie. Uh, I think there was a movie called Outbreak um, mm -hmm. years ago or something about a virus of this nature right here. But, you know, back during the summer, we had um, – I have a member down on the Gulf Coast. They were doing probably 150 – vaccinations um, between two pharmacies of his and then all of a sudden now that the De uh, delta variant has uh, popped up his vaccination rate has gone up a lot more more of his customers more of his individuals in his local community are coming into his two pharmacies to be vaccinated and, um, and what we do today and and in the month of september is going to prove what happens in october november and december so we have to increase that number of vaccinations as we move forward, because if we don't, um, the fall and the winter are going to be bad. Well, it's and that, that's exactly right. And we saw yesterday the number of cases yesterday, 4,085 new cases. And the reason why that number is important is there is a guaranteed percentage of those that will wind up in the hospital. There's a guaranteed percentage of your daily cases that are going to wind up possibly dying from this. So the higher that number you start with, the higher those follow-up numbers are. And that's what you're talking about in terms of going into the future. What we do today doesn't affect tomorrow, Friday the 20th. It has no effect on it whatsoever. It has an effect on the end of September and October and November and on into Christmas, and that's what makes it so important. Now, Cheryl, you said that you're doing vaccinations by appointment. It's not just walk in and say, I, I want a shot. you got to make an appointment, right? Well, that's the way we have we, – we are planted in our pharmacy. Everybody does it differently. We just figure we still have – we want to do our best to, you know, provide protection for those people that are seeking it for the virus by giving the vaccinations. But we also have, you know, to take care of our other patients too, getting their medicines ready, you know, helping them solve their problems, taking care of them. So it's just our way to best balance and, you know, not create just a total level of frustration and chaos in our in our small environment and what we do. So we we find the appointment based is is a much better way to approach it. There's a lot that goes into it, not just giving the shot. The person comes in, there's you know, questionnaires to fill out, paperwork to do, 
when the person gets a vaccine, we monitor the patient for 15 minutes after they get it to make sure that they don't have any adverse effects or side effects and then, you know, send them on their way. So there's a lot that, lot that goes into the actual procedure of um, giving.